In this video, we will continue to look at homogeneity of physical equations. We will use a method to check if a few equations are homogeneous, and we will also use a method to determine the units of a particular variable in one of the equations, and we will also use a method to find the values of unknowns in a given equations. So we'll start off by checking various equations to see if they're homogeneous. The first equation we look at is given as W equals E A E squared over 2L, where we're told that W represents energy, E represents the modulus of elasticity, which has the same units as pressure, which is a pascal. And of course, A represents the area. Um, e represents the extension in a wire. And L is the original length of the wire. So now that we know what each of these variables in the equation represents, we can go ahead and examine each in terms of their base units and therefore check if the equation is indeed homogeneous. So we begin with energy. Now from previous questions, we know the unit of energy to be equal to the joule. So the base unit of energy, W, is the joule, which of course we know to be equal to kilogram meter squared per second squared. So the SI unit of energy is a joule, which has base unit equivalent kilogram meter squared per second squared. Now, modulus of, modulus of elasticity, or Young's modulus, has the same units of pressure. And therefore, its units are as follows. Now, if you recall, pressure is calculated by dividing the force by the area. So therefore, the base unit would be Newton per meter squared which of course, so that would be the SI unit of, of, um, the SI unit of, of pressure, same unit as models of elasticity. But of course, we need to be able to express that in terms of the base units. And this of course would be kilogram per meter per second squared. All right? So the units of pressure, the Pascal, Newton per meter squared, is equivalent to kilogram per meter per second squared. Area, of course, we know to be meter squared. Um, extension, of course, that is, a, that is a unit of length, dimension of length, and therefore E as the unit meter, and L, representing length, will have unit of meter as well. So we see that basically, there are two terms in the equation, W on the left-hand side, and the second term is E A E squared over 2L. So what we will do is to basically establish the base unit equivalent of the term on the right hand side. And then we will be able to determine if the equation is homogeneous. So let's examine the base unit of this second term. So we have E A E squared over 2L. Now because you're multiplying these variables at the top, we will also multiply the respective base units and because we're dividing by L, we will also divide by the base unit of L. So for the E, we have kilogram per meter per second squared. We will multiply that by the units of area, meter squared. And we'll also multiply that by the units of E squared, which also is equal to the meter squared. And we will divide all of that by the unit of L, which is the meter. So having done that, we will then proceed to simplify this. So we know that meter squared times meter squared, that gives us meter to the fourth power. So we can continue. So we have kilogram meter per, sec per meter per second squared times meter to the fourth power divided by meter. And we proceed. Now, meter will divide into meter to the fourth to give us meter cubed. And from there, we can actually simplify the numerator. So this will now give us 
kilogram meter to the minus one. Now, because you're multiplying the, the meters, which of course are, um, well, indices of the same base, m to the minus one, m to the three, we will add the powers. So this is m to the minus one plus three, and we keep our per second squared. So this gives us kilogram meter squared per second squared. Now, having established or having expressed the right-hand side or the term on the right in terms of its base units, we will then compare its base units to the base units of the term on the left, and we will then determine whether the equation is homogeneous. So if we compare the two, the base units of W and the base units of um, the units on the right, we see that the base units are kilogram meter squared per second squared for W, kilogram meter squared per second squared for the terms on the right, and it therefore means that the base units are identical, and therefore the equation is indeed homogeneous. We will continue by looking at a second um, example, second equation, where we'll be given another equation and we'll be expected to determine whether the equation is homogeneous or not, right? So this one says the centripetal force F acting on a particle of mass M moving in a circular path of radius R with speed V is given by, so this equation is given as F equals MV squared R where F, we are told, represents centripetal force. M, of course, represents mass. V represents speed or velocity. Speed. And R is equal to the radius of the circular path. So we will then proceed, of course, by identifying how many terms are in the equation. In this equation, we have one sign and equal sign, which means, of course, we have two terms, one on either side of the equal sign. We have the term F representing centripetal force, and we have the term MV squared R. So we will express each of these terms in, um, in terms of their base units, and then we will determine whether the equation is homogeneous. So for the base unit of force, again, we know the force is equivalent to the Newton, which in terms of base units is equivalent to kilogram meter per second squared, right? Now, for mv squared r, we can do that one time. So we have mv squared r. So we'll write down the base units individually for each of these variables, and then we'll combine them. So m represents mass, base unit for which is the kilogram. So we have the kilogram times now, V represents speed, unit of which is a meter per second. But of course, because it is being squared, we must square the base units. So this is times meter per second, and we square all of that. R, the radius, as base unit, the meter. And we proceed to simplify this. So we get kilogram. Now, meter to the power of 2, that would be meter squared. Per second to the power of 2, that would be per second squared, and of course, we multiply that by meter, which of course will be the same thing as meter to the power of one. So when you combine the meters, we multiply them according to the laws of indices, we keep our base and we add the powers, and this gives us kilogram meter cubed per second squared. So now that we've expressed the term on the right in terms of its base units, we will compare the base units and we will determine whether the equations are homogeneous or not, or the equation is homogeneous or not. So we see that the base unit of the term on the left, force, F, is the kilogram meter per second squared. Whereas on the right, the base unit equivalent of that term is a kilogram meter cube per second squared. 
Now clearly, these base units are not equivalent or not identical, and therefore the equation is not homogeneous. So we've determined that equation is not homogeneous. Now in, previous, in the previous video, we said that basically, if the equation is not homogeneous, then it simply means that the equation is incorrect. So if you look at this equation, can we identify where the error occurred in the equation? Now in this case, we can, because this equation, of course, would be um, one of those that we would have had some familiarity with. So the actual version of the equation should be f equals mv squared over r. So that is the correct form of the equation which allows us to calculate the centripetal force f on a body of mass m moving with a speed v in a circular path of radius r. In this next question, we're given an equation, and this time we're asked to determine the base units of a particular variable in the equation. So it says using the equation F equals G M1 M2 over R squared, where F is a gravitational force of attraction between two bodies of masses M1 and M2 respectively, separated by a distance R, express the unit of G, the universal gravitational constant, in terms of its base units. So we are given this equation, we're told what each symbol represents, and we're asked to find the base units of G. Now F, of course, represents the gravitational force of attraction between two bodies of masses M1 and M2, separated by um, a distance R. And G, of course, represents the universal gravitational constant. So because we're interested in finding the base units of G, the first thing we will do is to make V the subject of the equation, right? So multiplying both sides by FR squared, sorry, R squared, we get FR squared is equal to G M1, M2. Then of course, we divide both sides by M1, M2. These will cancel. And therefore, we get that G is equal to FR squared divided by M1, M2. Now, having made G the subject of the equation, we can then basically proceed to um, substituting the base units for each of the variables on the right hand side and proceed to finding the corresponding base unit for G. So again, F represents force, R radius, and M represents mass. So for the term on the right hand side, we can say the base units of FR squared over M1, M2. Now, again, the base unit of force is the Newton, which of course is equivalent to kilogram meter per second squared. We will multiply that by the base unit equivalent of R squared, which is of course meter squared. And we will divide that by the base unit of M1, M2, which would be kilogram times kilogram or kilogram squared, right? So we'll proceed to simplifying this. So this gives us, you know, in the numerator, we have meter and meter squared. So those two will multiply to give us meter cubed. So we have kilogram meter cubed per second squared divided by kilogram squared. So the kilogram in the numerator will divide into itself and will divide into the kilogram squared in the denominator to leave kilogram. And so what we're left with is meter cubed per second squared per kilogram. So we can leave it in fractional form, or we can actually write it in index form as meter cubed 
per kilogram per second squared. And this, of course, would be the base units of G. The gravitational, universal gravitational constant. So, of course, by making G the subject of the equation and then expressing the right-hand side in terms of its base units, we're able to determine the base units of the universal gravitational constant, G.